Professor Hanach Ben Pazi is chair of the Department of Jewish Philosophy at Bar Ilan University in Israel. He researches contemporary philosophy and modern Jewish thought, especially the philosophical writings and Jewish thought of Martin Buber. Franz, oh, I'm sorry, that's a comma, not a period. <laughs> Here we go again. The religious thought of Martin Buber, Franz Rosenzweig, Emmanuel Levinas, and Jacques Derrida. A challenging crowd of people right there. He writes on ethics, contemporary philosophy, and modern Jewish thought in the framework of religious studies and interreligious dialogue. Professor Ben Pazi wrote, Interpretation as an Ethical Act, Hermeneutics of Emmanuel Levinas, Educational Contract, Responsibility, Hopefulness, and Alliance. So I'm really looking forward to uh, this, uh, this session from uh, Dr. Ben Pazi. Please come up to the podium, and uh, we look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, UPF for this wonderful um, conference and wonderful environment and invited me to be part of that and um, I really am thankful for that. I want to thank Closer. Closer. I knew that people will say, I can't hear you. <laughs> so I know this is me. Um, and also, of course, uh, for the organizer of these sessions and this conference, the academic part of this conference. So, th so for me, thank for Professor uh, Frank Kaufman for organizing, and also Dr. Nuit Hirschfeld for uh, make it possible for me to arrive here. So thank you very much. Um, so as you can hear, I'm not uh, expertise in uh, River Moon theology. I'm just in. <laughs> Um, reader, and I want to talk about uh, Martin Buber from the perspective of, Buber, of Martin Buber. Um, my title is The Dialogue in the Era of Synthetic Conversation, Rethinking Spiritual Knowledge and Artificial Intelligence. From time to time, I seem to hear a question echoing out of the depth of stillness. But he who asks it does not know that he is asking it, and he to whom the question is addressed is not aware that he is being questioned. It is the question that the world of today, in utter unawareness, puts to religion. And this is the question. Are you perhaps the power that can help me? Can you, the religion, teach me to believe? This is for Martin Buber, the silent question. He wrote it uh, immediately after the Second War. And another quotation that I want to put is from Genesis, very famous, of course, in the image of God created he them. Them, not him. In this paper, I would like to reevaluate the question of ethics and humanity through Buber's The Essence of Human Being. My aim is to think the humanity of human being in the time of artificial intelligence and the possibility of truthful conversation through dialogue at this time that I call here the era of synthetic conversation. In more than one aspect, this kind of questions and this ethical context may rephrase the role of religion in general and Judaism in particular facing the problems of technology of our time. Let me say that for Buber, facing the problem of humanity in modernity was his main task in all of his philosophy, to establish the way, what he called, a believing humanism. And as a Zionist and Jewish thinker, he pointed towards the programmatic task of Zionism, not political at all, but constructing a way of Hebrew humanism. I would like to draw your attention 
to three domains of discussions, crucial and important, each of which requires us to think deeply relig from religious perspective and from ethical perspective. The first discussion is the human crisis, or the crisis of human being. And that means that we have to ask ourselves about the meaning of humanity in the time of crisis. What will happen to men in the age of artificial intelligence? Is there a way to remain human, an authentic human being, in an era that the most of our life is surrounding by synthetic environment? The second discussion is the question and the options to continue to make a true dialogue in our time. Is it possible to having a direct and sincere conversation between people in our time? There are screens, cellular phones, electronic surroundings, and algorithms that can guess what we are going to say. And the third discussion is the ethical one. What I call, from a philosophical perspective, the moral subject. Whether and how we should relate to the new intelligence beings, artificial beings, do we have to relate to them as an ethical subject? For example, do we have to think about robots as moral subjects? Of course, there is a legal question concerning these new developments. But I want to focus on the basis, the ethical mode of thinking. So there are three domains of question, questions. The first is between one and himself. The other is between one and the other. And the third one is between one and the AI, I and the robot. I'm, from your face, I understand that the, the third one is not very familiar to you, but it's very important from the ethical point of view. Of course, these discussions are not separated, but related one to the other. But still, I would like to distinguish between these three topics. So the first one, in the midst of the crisis. And I want to quote from Buber. It's immediately after the Second War. For the past three decades, we have felt that we were living in the initial phases of the greatest crisis of humanity has ever known. It grows clear to us that the tremendous happening of recent years can be understood only as a symptom of this crisis. It is not merely a crisis brought about by one economic and social system being suppressed by another. More or less ready to take this place, rather, all the systems, all the new, equally involved in the crisis. What is the question, therefore, is nothing less than men's all existing in the world. So for me, and uh, following the, the lectures before, I, I may say that for Buber, politics is not the problem. Politics is just the result of the problem. The crisis is human being. And what we see, geopolitics and politics and between religions, is just the result of the human crisis. Martin Buber proclaimed that the most precise wording and difficult mode of saying about the meaning of this crisis, the crisis of human being following the 20th century, the world wars, the period of atomic bombs, genocide, and the Shoah, the Holocaust. But this is not the first time that Buber wrote about human crisis. The basis of that, taking what he called, the basis of that begin in the beginning of the 20th century. But, and here I may say a little problematic uh, uh, saying here in this conference, the basis for him was the desire for the one. The passion for unifying existence. The search, what he called, what is common to the all. 
But this is not enough. Because we have to ask ourselves not about the words unifying, unity, whole, globalization. We have to ask deeply what is the meaning of these words. Buber well articulates his worry from the humanity of human being. He analyzes the problem of humanity and his deep understanding of this crisis is because of the alienation between people, between one and the other, between man to man, between human being and nature, and between human being and divine entities. According to Buber, the greatest difficulty of modern age is this crisis, the alienation of human being, one in the face of the other person, but also there is an alienation between one and himself. In the age of alienation, there is a distance between people. There is forgery, false, in the most intimate relations between people. In the age of alienation, human being cannot be sure and safe in his life. And the results of that feelings, he could lose his possibility to live in a deep sense of the world of living. So while Buber wrote his magnum opus, 1922, Ish und Du, he phrases clearly that there is a change of the meaning of subjectivity in our time. What is the meaning of subjectivity of the subject? And he differentiates between two kinds of subjectivity, two kinds of I. When, ma when one man relates to object and when one man relates to a subject. For Buber, the fundamental differentiation is the differentiation between relation and distance. Two modes of relations, what he called I and thou, and I and it. Or in German, ich und du, and ich und es. And a quote from Buber, to men, to men, the word is twofold, in accordance with twofold attitude. The attitude of man is twofold, in accordance with the twofold nature of the primary words which he speaks. The one primary word is the combination, I and thou. The other primary word is the combination, I and it. Wherein, without a change in the primary word, one of the words, E, or she can replace it. And to add one word for this uh, Buberian uh, saying, I will say, you can relate to the other person as an object, as an it. Even when you talk with him politely, even you call him man and human being, it's not enough. But for Buber, the most important is that the meaning of the I is different if you talk with the other I and thou, or you talk with him as I and it, ich und es. We can read this section carefully and hear the nuance, because the meaning of the I change in the question, how you relate to the other person, how do you relate to nature, how you relate to the divine. So we have to ask the question, what is going to be with our relation to the other person? Or maybe we have to ask ourselves, what is the meaning of subjectivity facing AI? New tech, artificial intelligence, unreal creature. According to Buber, the whole meaning of subjectivity completely changed. What is the meaning of the eye of the self in the time of artificial intelligence? According to this fundamental differentiation, there is no option for two dialogue with AI. And we have to ask ourselves if there could be an option for a two dialogue between people at all. Because what happened to the subject in this age of new technology? And here immediately I come to the second discussion. Is there an option for a dialogue? I know that we are in conference that the dialogue is the most important. 
So I ask about the meaning of this dialogue. As you already know, wonderful rhetoric, manipulation, professional talking, there are different ways to describe false conversation. We cannot relate to the other person as a real dialogue as all for Robert. So facing the new technology in the age of AI, when you make, when you make chat with virtual assistants, and you don't know if there is a human assistant behind this chat or just a virtual assistant that you talk with. And it's just example for the question if there is still true dialogue, authentic dialogue between people. And again, I would like to come back to the same question. Can we, can we continue to talk about a true dialogue in our age? For me, it is an urgent question that we have to deal with. Perhaps the meaning of the absence of a true dialogue between people is concealing human values. And the result of that, the absence of, the absence of humanity, of the historical human being as we know him. Is there an option to, be, to make a real conversation just face-to-face -face meeting? What we will call conversation as a being in dialogue. The conversation as a real and true conversation. And let me take you to the, conversa to the, uh, the way that Buber de described it. Buber described the question of what is the meaning of real dialogue? And make a wide, wide range of different conversation that are false that are not to dialogue. This is a conversation that technically conducted, act like a dialogue conversation, but they are still false. The great rhetoric is just one way to make a dialogue that is false. Usually people are busy with the task of keeping themselves from the view of the other. One get into a dialogue, a conversation, and why he is presented in the situation of conversation, he continues to ask himself, how am I viewed by the other person? While well, taking into account the way, sorry, and perhaps it's more complicated. When this man responds to the other person, he takes into account the way that his answer will accept it by the other person. So in a real dialogue for, for, for Buber, in a true dialogue, one has to open himself before the other person, staying in a mode of being exposed before the other, and in the option of being reciprocity between I and the other. Maybe this is the meaning of, of the dialogue that you talk with, no, nobody, no matter who is the other person. So, can we still continue to talk about a true dialogue, about sincerity? And I continue to, to, to a quote from Buber. That people can no longer carry an authentic dialogue with one another is not only the most accurate symptom of the pathology of our time, it is also that which most urgently makes a demand of us. I believe Buber. Buber believe, despite all, that peoples in this hour can enter into dialogue, into a genuine dialogue with one another. In a genuine dialogue, each of the partners, even when he stands in opposition to the other, affirms and confirms his opponent as an existing other. And here I come to the third question. A little bit strange to this environment, but I want to talk about it. It's important for me. The third one is very important and perhaps the most crucial question, which I can only point about now. It, it concerns the question, do we have think about artificial intelligence and artificial creatures as a moral status 
as a moral being. The ethical imperative and the moral obligation, according to Kantian philosophy, relates to any creature who is within. Hence, the question, what is the relation in which we are committed to for a new kind of creature? What is the ethical obligation in a world where there are intelligent beings that are not with the tasks of the definition of being human? We usually think about artificial intelligence as a continuation of human will and deed. With what Heidegger analyzed as in his phenomenology, the techni. The armor is just an extension of the end. So the, the artificial intelligence is kind of extension of our will. But we have to think when people, human beings like you and me, will have in themselves kind of new technology in their body. What is the meaning of this status? I skip a little. <laughs> Before I want to start answering the, the question, it is important to me to add a worldwide perspective of the discussion. It is up to ask the tools and ideas we need to measure the question. What is the place of religious concepts concept within this context? Perhaps I need to articulate this question about the difference in the connection between three domains, ethic, religion, and technology. And as I open my paper, the question of the world today puts to religion. Has the religion have the power to assist humanity? Could the religious thinking teach us to believe in human being in the age of AI, artificial intelligence? For Buber, what was the most important of his task in his life was to return to the question of humanity facing the human being in the time of crisis of humanity. We have to rebuild the lexicon. What is the meaning to being human in our life? And the way will lead to diversity discourses of humanism, of religious, religion, and philosophy. At the end of his life, Buber said, for, I should, for if I should characterize my own basic view of my concept, it can only be the concept of a believing humanism. In these words, Buber describes himself in 1963, some two years before of his death, upon receiving the Erasmus Prize in Amsterdam. So, According to Buber, all of his concept of dialogue is the question of what is the meaning of believing humanism. And I want to add here that Buber brings full circle of course of creative endeavor lasting more than 60 years since he first named this task a biblical humanism and later he called it Hebrew humanism and at the end of life he called it a believing humanism. And here I, want to, uh, I, w I would like to arrive to conclusion, and it's not a conclusion, it's maybe instead of conclusion. The history of humanism is the history of all attempts to define what is the meaning to be human? What is the ethical meaning of being human? These are attempts that can be achieved by literary activity, which determine this type of literature that constitute the humanist conception of being human. This humanist culture and art reshaping the concept of humanism and established the educational system in the light of the concept of humanism. Humanism, says Buber, is the face in human being if he becomes human. The thought that man, man, is, the ob, man is the object of face is rhetorically a seductive one, but it requires some reflection. Buber see the potential 
and problematic implication of this idea, and uses the citation, if he were a man, if he becomes human. In other words, face in man is not face in the human biological spaces, simply because it is human, but is a face in man's potential to be human. The moral significance of this attitude is that man is required to recognize and take into account that their achievement of humanism is not guaranteed, and that he might discover himself sliding into the zone of inhumanity. And when, at certain times, the dangers looms that humanity will slide into the zone of inhumanity, of inhuman, then must we turn for assistance of an early age, in which the human element of humanity was clear and pure, in order to find the driving force toward a new, free humanity. The renewal of the concept of humanity is undertaken in the shadow of the truth of losing it. Talking about, talking about humanism is not merely a nonsense and pretty speech, as we might be tempted to think. It stands rather in the looming shadow of the loose and the absence of humanism, and even emerges out of the struggle with its actual absence. The goal of humanism I'm talking with real person. <laughs> Thank you. Come back, sorry, skip. Come back to the linguistic tradition is not only return to the past. Its role is to generate as image and a normative value of the human qua human. The foregoing discussion allows us to understand the meaning of the project that Weber points us, returning to the Bible discourse. It is not a romantic experiment of return to the God of glorious past, returning to the Jewish state, the Jewish land, the Jewish people, no. This is an attempt to study the Bible per se, either from literary national or historical perspective, the goal is an ethics, an identity of the normative values presented in the Bible. And for Buber, the, the real meaning of the ethical, the biblical ethics is dialogue. And maybe in those words, I will ask to end my talk today. The risk of losing the humanity in the age of AI is real. If the, the risk was great enough in the age of the technology, then it becomes much more risky in the age of the thought algorithms, the ability of art AI, artificial intelligence. In what Buber eyes can we preserve humanism? And humanity in a non-human era is the Bible's special status, which allows and calls us to human ethical being and the meaning of biblical and liberal humanism is to in turning to the life of dialogue. Thank you. <laughs>